We have hit off-season report card time, and today we are starting with the big gun, Roman Yossi, the captain of the Nashville Predators, and why we think he might have had a disappointing season for the Nashville Predators. Also on today's agenda, Colton Sissons. How did the underrated gem of the Nashville Predators bottom six do this year? We'll talk about both today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast available to you wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at InsideThePreds.com. I also want to mention today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. And Nashville Predator is not in the postseason, so Ooh. we are in off-season mode. And it is that time of year that every kid and parent dread report card time. <laughs> I know. I feel so judgy as we prepare for these. I really do. I feel judgy. And so my heart goes out to all of the teachers that have to prepare these report cards and to all of the parents who have to look at them. And yeah. here's the here's what's real. We're not giving money for A's. So Nashville Predators players, you're not getting any cash from us from your A's, but we'll appreciate you. Wait, did you give cash to your kids for A's? I did not. Okay. I did not I was, do that. Was, is, you... that a th is that a thing? No. Like, it is we a were, thing. We were not. Like, my parents were just like, oh, you got an A. Well, yeah, you should have. Yeah, you, you get room and board. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. You get to live here until you're 18. <laughs> No, it's actually a really big thing a lot. I, I think there is a lot of parents. And look, if that's how you do it, then God bless you. Yeah. I don't think your kid's going to turn into an axe murderer. So do what works for you. But we did not pay for A's. We did not. Yeah, more, more power to you if you did. Yeah. Uh, and we are starting off our report card season with the team captain, uh, Roman Yossi. Now, this was a guy who arguably... Might have been the team's MVP last year. Kind of in the conversation, maybe, for MVP of the entire league. I mean, he finished in the top seven, so that's saying something. Uh, but this year, a step down, especially offensively, went from 96 points, of course, record-setting year for both him and the Nashville Predators, uh, down to 59 points. He did have that injury in there, but... You know, I think overall, and I could, I think you say, yeah, maybe, maybe not the year that we were expecting from Roman Yossi in terms of a grand follow up. No, it was not the year that we expected from Ro Roman Yossi. And Poyle and Barry Trotz at the end of the season press conference talked about look, we needed our best players to be the best players. None of these players who set personal career records, franchise records, really were able to replicate that this season. And Roman Yossi was one of those. And I'll tell you, he was the one I think I was most surprised about. Not that I necessarily felt like this was a guy who was going to get back to chasing 100 points per game. But yeah. just overall, I, I don't think we saw the same from Roman Yossi that we did last season. I think there's a lot of factors that go into what we saw and didn't see from Yossi. But this was this was a little bit of a disappointment for me. Yeah, we're going to get into all of them. So basically how we're going to do report cards, uh, for the big guns at least, we're going to go into what went well for them this season, what needs improvement, uh, a letter grade, and maybe what we see, you know, their role in the team moving forward. Uh, so let's start with what went well uh, for Roman Yossi. And uh, because, yeah, there, there is a, maybe a step back, maybe some, you know, diminished expectations based on this year but at the same time he was still the Preds leading scorer and uh, that offense collapsed and died at times without 59 on the ice 
Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's the thing that you have to take away from Roman Yossi is not just, he is a very responsible defenseman for sure, but you factor in with Roman Yossi, you get such a complete package from him. You get somebody who is kind of a cog offensively for the Predators, especially when you look at things like the power play. You know, with Roman Yossi, the power play was significantly better than when they did not have Yossi on the power play. And so for me, I think his value is, of course, his defensive play. I think, you know, he's got a lot of value and a lot of small. Oh, I see your face. You think I can't see your face, but I see your face. I'm not saying this was his best year defensively, but I think that he is a solid defenseman. I think there are some factors that are going into why you're making your face that you're making, and we're, we can dive into those. But I, for me, what goes well for Roman Yossi, what went well when we had him was just what he was able to help do offensively. Go ahead, talk about your face. Uh, well, should we say that for the what didn't go well segment? <laughs> we can do that if you want. Because uh, <laughs> everything, everything you just said, uh, I kind of vehemently disagree with. Okay. Uh, about what went well versus what went wrong for him this year. But okay. uh, yeah, all, offensively is, I think, the story of, of Roman Yossi. Yeah. And there's not a lot of people in the NHL. Uh, that has that kind of offensive dynamo role, you know, that Roman Yossi has and not many people who do it as well as Roman Yossi has. I mean, this, this guy has been one of the most dangerous two way defensemen in the entire NHL for the past few years. I mean, you, you see, you know, arguably maybe should have won the Norris last oh, year, that's you awesome. know, in, in his Norris year, he had 65 points in 69 games, which was fantastic. You know, 23 goals last year, 18 goals this past year. Aren't bad. I mean, he flirt, you know, he doesn't get hurt. He's easily at 20 goals again this yeah. season. You know, I, I think that's where the story ends. And it's so much of this offense, so much of this Preds offense runs through, Roman Yossi. I mean, he's the facilitator. He's the guy, you know, that dips behind, you know, the the, the red line. You know, the, he's. I, I think of him almost as like a positionless hockey player. For sure, almost. He's yeah. just kind of like that roamer on the ice, where it's just like you know, wherever he is, you get him the puck, and then you play through him. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing, you know, to, that John Hines, I think, deserves a little bit of credit for is really figuring out a way to make Roman Yossi offensively make his skills shine is mm -hmm. kind of freeing up. And it's like, OK, you're not just going to be this left defenseman staying at this point. You're going to be just the puck carrier and you're going to take it wherever you need to on the ice. You're going to pass it. People are going to play through you that sort of facilitator role that I think he's done very, very well at. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I think he's critical to Nashville's offense. Yeah. Uh, and this is a hard season to grade too, because of the whole injury situation, which we'll get into. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, let, let's just, let's go ahead and uh, go to who the minuses then, because we know Roman Yossi's offense is fantastic. Like yeah. we know he is absolutely, you know, phenomenal yes. offensively. That's, that yes. has never been the strong shoot to me. The criticism comes from the defensive end of the ice. Okay. And it is a far cry this year than what we saw a few years ago from Roman Yossi. Uh, and that's something that we will get into in just a second. Plus when we're done talking Roman Yossi, also look at Colton Sissons's year, give him a grade as well. First, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by game time. Everybody has been in this situation before you want to go to a Preds game or, you know, maybe a concert, a comedy show, but it's very last minute. You know, you're trying to buy tickets the day of, and it just winds up being a big old mess. You know, you can't find the right seats together. They're $300 on one site, but $250 on another site. But is that site sketchy? You don't know. What are all these fees doing here? And at the end of the day, you're just like, ah, screw it. Not worth it. We'll catch the next one. Well, you can forget all that. 
with the Game Time app. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They got killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over tickets and instead worry about just enjoying the event. Game Time makes it so you don't have to plan months in advance. They have deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, and they have flash deals for tickets like hockey, football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and much more. And the Game Time Guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's the fastest-growing ticketing app in the country for a reason, and that's because you know exactly what you're going to get. When you arrive, you get images of your seat before you buy. You get your tickets in a matter of seconds, just two taps, and you're all set. And you get them directly to your phone so you never have to dig through email. So try it yourself. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Again, snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Terms apply. Create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Anne, let's talk about Roman Yossi's defense. Okay. Because I think this maybe is in the what improvement. Okay. This is. Now, you know, a few years ago when Roman Yossi won the Norris, we talked about him having just that really good offensive season. But what set him apart from guys, you know, like John Carlson, who was on pace, you know, for yeah. what season Roman Yossi had last year when that when the uh, COVID hit. Yeah. He, the reason Roman Yossi won is because of his defense. You know, you dig into the analytics and you saw that Roman Yossi was excelling defensively, you know, really good at shot suppression, really good at puck possession, making sure the other team didn't have the puck really good at getting the puck out of his zone. And then when you factor in the offense, it's like, wow, this is a well-rounded player. It feels like Roman Yossi has just kind of become one note over the past few years. I mean, defense to me has taken a big step back and some of the analysts, I mean, it's not like he's bad. Well, of like in no, in no way are you going to say he's like a, Oh, a, a, a traffic cone out there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not having the same kind of defensive impact as he had a few years ago. And that's interesting because, you know, we're, are you going to go back and say, well, you know, it's because, you know, Ryan Ellis is gone or Shea Weber's gone. You know, some of these guys that he, you know, he's had a good partner over those years in the past few years. Uh, it's just kind of been a revolving door. Mm-hmm. Are you saying maybe this new role that he's had has left him susceptible to maybe some defensive lapses or is it just, you know, is, is it just a step back defensively? Yeah, I don't know. And I'm with you. I I feel like as we analyze his defensive performance, it's very much about individual perspective because Roman Yossi is a good defenseman in the NHL, but is he at his best defensively this past season? And and I agree with you in saying that, no, this was not his best season defensively, but I am with you as I, you know, breaking down his stats, looking, you know, even back at that Norris trophy season, I'm very confused. Mm -hmm. I'm very confused about what is going on because if you look back when he won the Norris, And like you talked about, that was a lot of that was about his defense. I mean, yes, he's always been this great, well-rounded player, but that was about his defense. Um, But he also, that was a season where he played half of the season without uh, Ryan Ellis. This was a season where there was a lot of drama, where there was a coaching change and there was COVID and all this. So there was a lot going on that season and still he performed well. And as I look at his defensive stats, my first reaction was, this is probably a byproduct of what happened overall with the blue liners for the Predators this season, because this was a kind of unsettled defensive season for the Predators, starting with bringing in Ryan McDonough and the McDonough at home experiment, and that didn't go right. And then you're shifting players, and then you just have this, you know, God bless Alexander Carrier, you know, just injured and, you know, Dante Fabro's playing really well. Oh, Dante Fabro's maybe having an off game. Where Where is Dante Fabro landing? Who is going to be Roman Yossi's partner? But then again, I go back to, but his Norris Trophy season was a bit of a hot mess. Yeah. 
coaching and change he, and yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my initial thought was how much of this defensive, you know, kind of, and again, not bad performance, but less than what we're used to from Roman Yossi is based on circumstance. But then you go back and you look at Norris and you're like, his circumstances there were a little bit dumpster fire. Yeah. So what is it? What is it that's happening? Is it role? Is it partner? Is it the whole rest of the, like, what is it? Is it age? I don't even, I don't even like to be the guy that says that. I mean, he's a year younger than me, so let's hope it's not age. Oh, uh, word. <laughs> it, it's, probably, it's probably a little bit of everything. And mm -hmm. to me, the defensive partner, that's to me, do you go out and make, you know, make it a priority to figure out who's going to play on that right side next to Roman Yossi? Like, is that like a Barry Trotz, very high offseason priority? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's not Alexander Carrier or, you know, do you find an upgrade there? Uh, with all due respect to Ryan Patrick, who's, you know, was very serviceable this year. He doesn't have that speed anymore to be a everyday, you know, top line guy against, right. you know, some of these guys. You know, he's probably best fit for a penalty killer, maybe like, you know, bottom of the bottom pair anchor role. You know, do, do you make it a priority and say, look, you know, we got maybe five more years of really good prime Roman Yossi. How do we make it so that we are at our best during the rest of his prime years? And to me, mm -hmm. I think you got to go out and find a really good partner for him to play with. Maybe that's Alexander Carrier. Maybe you look at him and be like, you know what, once he's healthy, once we, you know, polish him, once he fixes a few things, we think he's that guy. But if not, I think you got to go out and see who's out there. I wonder if it's the right time for that, though. And this is this is what I think is going to be very hazy for the Nashville Predators through this offseason. Do is this the time to go out and invest in somebody for Roman Yossi? Or do you make do with what you have as you develop some of these other guys and see what you've already got, you know? But, but if that's, if that's the case where it's like, oh, uh, if we're not there yet, mm -hmm. then what's the point of having prime Roman Yossi? I see. And that's where I think we're in a pickle. That's where I think yeah. we're in a pickle because what, you don't want to waste this. You don't want to waste prime Roman Yossi. You don't want to, you know, and this team is not, regardless of how good these young players do, right now this team in the next couple of seasons is not going to be wildly successful without really good Roman Yossi. So on the one hand, you want to find somebody who is going to be the defensive partner that's going to allow him to do what he does well. On the other hand... You have to be careful not to go out and invest money in somebody when maybe there is somebody in two seasons that's developing that may become that. Like, this is where I think this reset for the Nashville Predators could be a little bit more complicated yeah. because you're still trying to figure out as great as these young players were this season, you still don't 100% know what you've got. So what do you do this off season? Do you, do you sit on it and, and see what you've got, get a better look at what you've got? Or do you, like you said, go out and invest because you don't want to waste Roman Yossi. Yeah. And, and I, I if, think it's complicated. And if that's, yeah. And if, if that's the answer, you know, it's to, to wait and see. And then this year you're like, okay, it's not Carrier mm -hmm. um, or, you know, there, there, there's somebody else that we want there. We need to develop somebody. Then you get into the pickle of, oh crap, we, we are, we are either going to just let Prime Roman Yossi yeah. sit here for five more years, or we need to evaluate uh, what our what our options are. Uh, and if you had to give a letter grade to mm -hmm. Roman Yossi this season, mm -hmm. what what would your final letter grade be? Okay, I feel very judgy about this. I would say like a B minus, but so much, it's so frustrating because here's, he is the player I would have wanted to see in the lineup down the stretch, more than Forsberg, more than Duchesne, mm -hmm. uh, more than Carrier. 
he is the the piece that was out due to injury that I think might have been really important down the stretch. So if this is a hard grade for me, but I'm going to say B minus because first of all, everybody loves Roman Yossi and he can't possibly just be average. I also don't think it's out of the question that Preds make the playoffs if Roman Yossi is on that team. A hundred percent. I mean, yep. you can think about it. Like Roman Yossi in that lineup compared to, I don't know, like first line Jeremy Lazan, like that's worth at least <laughs> one win, right? <laughs> At least, like that's 100. worth at least one win. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it's it's funny how much that injury perspective changed things. Yeah. Uh, I would I, I would say B minus. Yeah, is probably what I would go. Yeah, um, because I think like you know he he's still you know Preds leading scorer, but in terms of again, you have to measure the grade based on your expectations for them. Yes, and for the expectations for Roman Yossi, I think it was kind of a step back. Uh, from where he was last year and where we needed him to be this year. So B minus for Roman Yossi, still yeah. solid. Um, we also have another player to get to today. It is Colton Sissons. A guy that everybody kind of seems to forget about is still always being on the Nashville Predators. The quiet, sturdy uh, guy on the fourth line. We'll talk about him in just one second. First, want to let you know this episode's brought to you by our great friends at Athletic Greens. This is a product that Nick and I have talked to you about, and it's a product that we both love. And full disclosure, I had never tried Athletic Greens until they sent us a free sample, and it took just a few weeks of using their product, AG1, before I became a believer. This is a product that is easy to use and it is going to make a big difference in your day. So what is this stuff that we're talking about? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1 in a glass of water, you're going to absorb 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports everything from gut health to your immune system, to nervous system, to recover to energy, to focus, and aging. That's right. It helps with aging. It does all of those things. And here is what's so great about it. It is literally one scoop in a glass of water once in the morning, and here, and it tastes great. This is a, a thing that you're not going to mind doing. It's going to be an easy thing to add into your life, and it's going to take a lot of the hassle out of getting all of those vitamins and minerals out of your day. And it's lifestyle friendly. So whether you struggle with dairy or gluten, this is a product that you can use. It contains less than one gram of sugar, has no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, no artificial anything. And like I said, this is a product that tastes great. It's going to cost you less than three dollars a day and that's a little bit cheaper than that starbucks run that we usually make to get through the afternoon so right now it is time for you to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Again, one scoop, once a day in a glass of water. That's it. No need for a million different supplement bottles and pills to get what you need for your health. So to make it easy, our friends at Athletic Greens are going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right. We are continuing Preds Report Cards with Mr. Colton Sissons. Yes. It, it, it's, it's like, if you, here's the thing. If, if you went through and you asked people to write down every predator like from memory <laughs> I, I guarantee you colton sissons would be like the guy that people forget like leave off the most and it's funny because man you look at the impact he's had here with the nashville predators and yeah like it's he's done pretty good yeah, I was trying to think through, like, if I had, like, one word to describe Colton Sissons, what would it be? And I came up with the Great Barrier Reef, and here's why. So the Great Barrier we Reef, it's a thing that, like, from up above, you can see that it's there, and you're like, oh, I bet that's cool. But it's down deep, and you're like, oh, okay. But what you don't realize is how life-giving 
that Great Barrier Reef is, how much cool stuff is happening underneath the water in the Great Barrier Reef. And I think that's Colton Sissons. Like you said, this is a guy that's kind of a depth player. This is somebody that, like you said, is not the first name. I don't, I don't think he's a best-selling jersey, even though we did have that Snossus jersey. Yeah, you got to have the Snossus. Got to have the Snossus jersey. But this is somebody, when you really dig into his season and you look at what he does – you're like, there is so much life here. This is somebody who really contributes consistently to this team. Colton Sissons is a little great barrier reef delight. Yeah. And he does a lot of things very well, like very mm -hmm. good on faceoffs. Yes. Uh, very good on the penalty kill. You know, he's very good at forechecking. There's a lot of things. He's like a little Swiss Army knife. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's funny, the past couple of years, we're like, yeah, the one thing Colton Sissons doesn't really do well is offense. Had 30 points this season, which yeah. matched his career high. 12 goals. First time he's had 12 uh, double-digit goals since 2019. And then the second time in his career he's done that. Uh, it's funny for like a guy who's like a grinder, like a, you mm -hmm. know, you know, a guy who's always out there, you know, quote unquote a scrappy guy, you know, a guy that's always kind of tasked with, you know, playing against the other teams, kind of scrappy people. He also somebody that doesn't take a lot of penalties. He's a well-disciplined player. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I, I like Colton Sissons and it's really hard to find a lot of stuff uh, that didn't really work well for him. Yeah. I love what you say about him being a Swiss army knife because the perception is he's a depth player. Like you said, this is a guy who's like a four checker. He's a hard hitter, but he has such finesse to his game as well. Yeah. You know, you talked about the face off circles. He had the third best shooting percentage on the team behind Tommy Novak. Of course, everybody saw that one coming and Ryan Johansson. This is somebody. And I think this is just a little bit of trivia just for fun. Interestingly, he had the exact name, same number of shots on goal this season as last season, 87. thought that yeah. was interesting. In a little bit of trivia. Though. Maybe that's like, I, I think to me, and I think I've maybe said this in past years too, where self like, there's one thing I would like Colton Sissons to do more. It's shoot the puck more. Yes. Uh, because, you know, he shot the puck 111 times back in 2019, and that's when he had 15 goals. Mm -hmm. And that was just, you know, an average shooting percentage. You know, I watch him play, and he's so good at a lot of things. I mean, Stanley Cup Finals, he was the first line center, and he held his own pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Like, he's a guy that I think you, he's just out there and he shoots more. Like, he's, he's easily a consistent. 30 point 30 to 40 point guy every year and that's a good source of depth scoring uh you know maybe maybe that's the one gripe i have about colton sissons is sometimes you know he does he's so focused on so much of the other things that sometimes when he has an opportunity you know he'll try to facilitate for other players but not necessarily take the shot himself he's got a pretty decent shot like if you yeah. watch it you know it, it's not just you know going into the goalie's chest every single time yeah. Like he's somebody that, you know, has, you know, pretty good snap. Yeah. And and that's, you know, I would like to see him maybe take advantage of that a little bit more. I agree with you. You said the word he's so busy facilitating and that's so much of what he does that I do think we miss out on what his production can be. And, yeah. and I agree with you. For me, I want to see more of that. I also love where we kind of saw him end up at the end. Colton Sissons was with Yakov Trenin, which that's just a match made in heaven. But also Yuso Parsonen, which I thought yeah. that's something I'm very interested to see if they start off or where that grouping lands in training camp. Because I think you have with Yakov Trenin, Colton Sissons and Yuso Parson, and you have a very physical line, but my goodness, could you have some fun offensive production? Yeah. And to me, I think Colton Sissons, maybe I would keep him back, like maybe keep him on that fourth line. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. maybe you try to maybe move Yuso to center next year, uh, which is his They've natural position. It. And, or, you know, Tommy Novak or, you know, whatever you wind up doing with that third line. There's also the possibility here Ryan Johansson moves back there, you know, <laughs> you, but I think Colton Sissons is a guy that you plug in on the fourth line and be like, okay, we now have, we have a solid fourth line. We have a line that is a productive, but B can go out there in defensive situations in grindy situations. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the line that we can do that. And Colton Sissons is a perfect fit for that. Now we can look at Nixon matching our top three lines 
in figuring out who fits best there. I think Colton Sissons, you keep him on that fourth line. And that's not an insult to Colton Sissons. I think it's just if that's the identity of what you normally want your fourth line to be, that way, you know, you're not having like, oh, there's the third grinding line. And then the fourth line is like your Michael McCarrens of the world. No, I think you put Colton Sissons at four, have a really good fourth line that you can (laughs) utilize in a lot of situations, revamp your top three lines. And all of a sudden you have four lines that can roll in a lot of different situations. Colton Sissons is the player who makes me think a lot uncomfortably about what was said about the Seattle Kraken and and Ellie Tolvanen, who is, we don't talk about Bruno, but we're going to bring it up right now. Because one of the things that David Poyle said is that Ellie Tolvan was so successful in Seattle because they roll their four lines almost equally. And Colton Sissons is a player on the Nashville Predators team who makes me think maybe the Predators need to look at something like that. Because like you said, this is somebody who high value, you know, nothing against him on the fourth line. It just changes how good your depth can be. Yeah, And, and that's Colton Sissons. Also want to give him a shout out. He was somebody by name called out by both Barry Trotz and David Poyle and John Hines, um, all three of them, who said at the end of the season when we had very few veterans left standing in that locker room, you had Tyson Berry, UC Soros, and Colton Sissons take over that locker room as leaders. And I think, you know what? Good for him. Good for him. Is that not somebody that you're like, yeah, that's somebody who I want speaking into kind of the next generation of players that are coming in. So huge shout out to me for even what we're seeing come from Colton Sissons in kind of a different role off the ice as well. Yeah. Uh, you lost, you know, Matias Eichholm, you lost Mikhail Granlund. I would be very surprised if Colton Sissons is not wearing one of those two A's full time at the start of next season. Yeah, Let's go. I'm with you, Ann. Um, easy A for me. Easy A for letter me. Grade. Yeah. Yep. For I sure. would say that. So uh, if you're listening, let us know your letter grades for Colton Sissons and Roman Yossi. Leave them on our YouTube channel or tweet them at LO underscore Predators. We would love to hear your feedback. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at InsideThePreds.com. You can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find me at penaltyboxradio.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. However you're listening to us, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite streaming service, please subscribe. Really helps us out. That's going to do it. Uh, that's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for always making us your first listen today. We'll be back tomorrow with an all new episode. We'll see you then.